so close together because uh -huh. if it would have been, you know, a real situation and somebody would have passed me, I would have just ran and got in the cab and said, you know, this is my You're cab. Picking me up. I, you know, right. You know, and I think cabs know that, so they just don't do it if we're too close. But so the first one, the the, yeah. the proximity right. was probably a problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, because that one did stop for you. Yeah. Okay. Clearly. All right. The second experiment had both on opposite sides um, of a one-way street. Let's see who the cab stopped for. There. I see you, John Halen. Mm -hmm. On one side, Bobby on the other. This is the one that kind of annoyed me. <laughs> what happened with that one? Because when, when the, the cabs were in the middle of the street, uh, every time they were in the middle of the street, they always went to his side. You know, if they were on, on my side of the street, they mm -hmm. came to me. But when they were in the middle, they had a decision to make, they chose him. And, you know, it happens all the time, but it just, you know, every time it happens, it just pisses me off. Yeah. Did you yeah. notice what he noticed when they were not on his side, they chose you? Uh, no. I didn't, I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that, no. Really? I mean, do, you, do you wonder why you weren't aware of it? Um, I guess because I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen no. here. No. So you would not. I think Bobby just he's put, he puts his hands up and three cabs come in front of him and he's just used to that happening. No, I was right. going to tell you my New York cab story. I mean, we didn't talk about that before, but I Surely. got one myself. I was here about a month ago on some business. I had to get from Midtown to Central Park West and it was a Friday afternoon, so rush hour. There were many, many cabs that passed me by. One of the limos, I was in a business suit, all right? So I was dressed professionally. Mm -hmm. I was in a business suit. And before he let me in the car, he negotiated a fare, which was an inflated rate, far beyond what you would normally pay for a regular cab fare. Did he want you to pay him before he took you to? He wanted to negotiate. He didn't insist on the money in advance, but he insisted on the fact that I would pay over $25 to go 20 blocks. Oh, Kenneth, but I'm hold the phone. i got to take a break. I'm going to let you jump oh, in when we get back. That's a Stanford professor. What do you figure? Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> And just to play the other side for a minute, uh, have you found that people assume black people make this up? Anybody who feels like they're discriminated against if they're black, that's the first thing they say. It's because they're black, and that's not usually what it is. How much of that do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think people are saying they made it up. Not anymore, because for the longest in New Jersey, New Jersey residents have been saying, you know, going down the turnpike, we get stopped more often mm. than anybody else. And we've been saying it for years. And no one paid attention to it until um, just the New Jersey Attorney General's office did the investigation two years ago and found that, you know, despite the many years that we've been saying it exists, he finally said, yes, it exists. So now we have less anecdotal evidence and the statistics that are going on is showing that it, it, it happens. We have to be believed because it just... It's just it. It's a fact of life. Yeah, it's a fact but, of life. But I'll tell you, a lot of people that are watching this show are still not going to believe it because right. of the fact that it hasn't been an experience in their lives. And what we've seen in a lot of the statistical research that we've done is that the, the more likely you are to actually be the victim of, of racial profiling or linguistic profiling, the more readily you would acknowledge that this is likely to exist. The less likely you are to be a victim of these things, the more you're likely to say, we don't have a problem in the yeah, society. Yeah, because your perspective is based because on your experience. Because your perspective is based on mm -hmm. your experience. That's why I'm really proud about a show we did, the Walk a Mile in Someone's Shoes. I don't know if you guys saw it. The white man that we turned into a black man with makeup and Hollywood prosthetics, nice little baldy cap, definitely had a different experience. And he came in saying, there's no way, my wife is making it up, his wife was black. And he got it. So you're probably right. <laughs> we should do that for the whole country. Well. <laughs> Just reverse everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> 